eventually turned up at Chatham Docks, although it was a, a, a running vehicle in the States. Uh, when I got there, I was asked if I had a forklift. It became quite apparent that somebody had had a massive front end collision in it. The challenge then was where do I find the bits? You know, hunting around the States for a, a front end for a 1939 Plymouth wasn't easy. My name's Mark, this is my 1939 Plymouth Coupe. My car experience really started uh, way back. My, my dad was a mechanic, so that got me into the car trade, although I dabbled with a few British cars. Uh, my first American car was when I was 18, uh, which was a Chevrolet Corvair, and uh, it's just gone on from there. So ever since then, I've, I've had the bug. I usually use one particular company. I bought quite a lot of cars from America. I, I decided to use a different company for the first time uh, started off okay uh, and then went downhill. Uh, it had uh, an incredibly long time getting from the, the trader uh, to the port. And when I say incredibly, it was like weeks and weeks and weeks. I queried it, um, they told me it was normal, but when it finally turned up at New York, uh, they sent pictures of the vehicle and the front looked different, completely different. Eventually turned up at Chatham Docks. Uh, when I went down there, although it was a, a, a running vehicle, in the States. Uh, when I got there, I was asked if I had a forklift, which was a bit worrying. Uh, and obviously when I went down to the vehicle itself, it became quite apparent that somebody had had a massive front end collision in it. The, the front had been smashed back out with a hammer. Someone had filled it with filler and various other bits and pieces to make it look sort of the right shape. But the, the fan was folded around, uh, the radiator was embedded in it. The, the front end was completely smashed to pieces. Um, so I had a, a long fight uh, with the company to, to get them to admit liability first. Uh, and then the, the, the challenge then was where do I find the bits? Uh, hunting around the States for a, a front end for a 1939 Plymouth wasn't easy. The, the overall state of the car, when I got it, it was various stages of rub down with bits of filler and various bits on it. It was blue at some point, metallic blue, a bit of a mess. But the basics were there, uh, and I was looking for something that I wanted to do pro street, because I hadn't done a pro street style before. Uh, and this had all the makings of it, all the basics were there for me to sort of get to grips with. So it had been neglected, is, is probably the right words. So I took it all the way back, uh, any imperfections, uh, cracks, obviously I had the, the front end had to be redone. Uh, and then blended back in the, all of the arches I wanted to blend rather than leave them bolted. So that's a bit of a challenge because you get the body move, so you, you've got to weld it as well. So I did that. The headlights were on top of the wings. Uh, I didn't like the look, it, it, it didn't look right. So uh, that was the next thing. I wanted to French them in uh, to the front. So I sourced a set of uh, a, a bit of kit from the States, uh, which I shipped over to sink them in the front just take it back as far as I could and then and start from scratch. Deciding the colour of the paint was quite tricky. Um, I went through a number of variations. I was quite set on a, a sort of burnt orange uh, pearl, uh, but then when I was starting to look around, everybody seemed to have suddenly started everything in burnt orange uh, and everything was coming up that colour. Um, so I didn't want to get on the bandwagon, so I kept looking and I wanted something deep. I didn't want to go black, uh, but I wanted to go close to it, but with a with a bit of fun to it. And then I thought about the purple uh, and then the challenge was just deciding what sort of purple I was going to end up with. So I went with a custom paint from a company over here. So black base, uh, then the translucent purple, the pearlescent and the sparkle, uh, and then the lacquer. Uh, and luckily it came out about right. Interior wise, it, it had already got the velour interior that was, was diamond stitched, but it was, it was in a bit of a poor state in places. So I've got a, a guy I know in the trade, uh, been in it a long time, he came and redid a few bits and pieces for me and freshened it up. Uh, and I've, I've kept it there because I, I wanted to keep that style. I wanted, didn't want to replace the whole thing. Um, maybe moving forward, one of the winter projects will be a complete redo of the interior, I'm not sure yet. So the dashboard, I bought a set of gauges uh, from the state. It, it was a very old dashboard. The, the gauges were, most of them weren't working. Um, so I refreshed the gauges, um, repainted the dash because it was 
it was all rusty. And uh, the column is General Motors column, so I sourced um, a good bespoke steering wheel, billet aluminium steering wheel for it, um, which fits nicely. I had to change the spline a little bit because it didn't quite fit when I got it, even though it was supposed to, but uh, just finishes it off. Uh, same with the little details like the ends of the indicators and things. I, I made up parts, found parts I could cut, put threads in and put them on there just to change it slightly. So the engine had a small block Chevrolet uh, when I got it, fairly standard. So uh, that was pulled apart, bored and stroked. So it's uh, 383. Uh, it's got a nice cam in it as well. Uh, I've stuck with the single carb just because twin carbs tend to start to get a little bit difficult to set up and, and keep right. And I wanted it usable. The worst thing you can do, and I've done it in the past, is to, to get a car to the point where you don't want to use it and, and the fun of building something and taking it out and, and letting people see it disappears because you put it on a trailer and you take it to a show and you take it off the trailer and I didn't want that. So um, I, I wanted to make sure it was a usable, um, it's right on the verge of usable. It's, it, it's quite juicy, but it's, it's definitely usable and streetable. So See, it's running a, a turbo uh, 400 GM box with a very high stall torque converter on it. Um, it's a nice strong box. Uh, reliable uh, and obviously I've had to shorten the prop as well. Exhaust wise it uh, had headers on it when I when I got the engine. Um, I've wrapped them for the heat uh, and then I've put a bigger collector on them so uh, and then from the collector back I, I welded it all up myself so I've got some straight through boxes three inch going straight into three inch pipe straight out to uh, the three inch uh, end caps that come from performance company uh, which which just fit perfectly on there. Suspension wise the front clip is off of a Nova 69 to 70 Nova. Um, it was originally drum brakes um, so it went well but wouldn't stop so I've converted that to disc brake front with a new master cylinder and everything and upgraded that. Rear is a 10 bolt Chevy which is a posi uh, limited slip diff uh, which is shortened and tubbed so obviously all of the tyre is underneath the car uh, and uh, I've gone for the biggest tyre you can get over here which is a, a 21 and a half so it's 33 by 21 and a half by 15s um, a lot of rubber. So the wheels uh, they're Weld Pro Sport wheels the front side I had to get new because uh, the front end was smashed up anyway uh, and I sourced them second hand in the UK. So windscreen wiper wise, a bit of a challenge because uh, the original car, the windscreen wipers are mounted above the screen, which I didn't want. I wanted to take them uh, underneath. So they've been, they've been welded up and I've got separate wiper motors, which are just generic ones. Uh, they're on two separate wiper motors without a linkage. So they work independently, which is a bit funky when you use them because you've got two switches depending on whether you want them both on or not. The wipers um, are sourced in the UK for uh, classic wipers, so they, they extend. The difficulty is the size of the screen and the white circle that I need. It was quite tricky to find the right length uh, and these ones alter, so I can alter them to where I need them. And the blades, again, uh, sourced over here off of a, just a classic car website that I found. I was looking for some peep mirrors for the side. Uh, again, I didn't want them too big. Uh, a lot of them have long extensions or they're curved down. Didn't want them on top of the door. Uh, so I ended up, uh, again, I think I found these, if I remember right, on an eBay site. Someone in the US was selling them. They looked right, they were the right length, uh, they were the right mounting. So um, I, I bought them uh, and uh, luckily they fitted just exactly how I wanted them to uh, and the look was just right. They're usable when it comes to reversing out of the garage, um, just about, because uh, it's a bit tight. Other than that, not really. They're okay. You can just about see them if you move about, but uh, they're more for the look than the actual usability, to be fair. I racked my brains about the turn signals for a while. Uh, I didn't want anything on the front of the car looking odd, so I decided to hide them behind the grille. And then I wanted to keep the American style, so with the twin filament so that it cuts out the side light uh, when the side lights are on. So I went for Harley Davidson indicators off the motorcycle uh, which fitted quite well where I bolted them uh, and they, they work well so they, they're just stuck behind the uh, the grills at the bottom. Enjoy it, take it out, let people see it. It's a little bit unusual. There's not many around. Most people at the shows think it's a Willis uh, when they come up even though it's written on the back and, and when I tell them it isn't some people argue and say it is uh, but it isn't. 
but yeah, it's it's different. That's what I enjoy about it. There's a lot of other cars out there. I don't know of any other 39 coupes over here that are custom. I know of one that's original. Um, but yeah, it's different and I enjoy driving it and getting it out there. Things I'm most proud of as a technician, uh, the engine's a breeze, it doesn't really bother me, but the bodywork, it's something I've never really done uh, a lot of. Uh, it, it, uh, so all the welding uh, and the actual prep underneath things, uh, I'm quite proud of that because it's quite difficult. It doesn't look it, but it's quite difficult to, to get the lines right when you're blending a wing to a, a, a body when they're bolted originally. So yeah, I'm quite proud of that. Biggest difficulties with this car is there's not a massive amount of people that make replacement parts for them, as in a lot of the common ones that people build, the, the 50s Chevys and the Willis's and, and the 32 Fords. Um, there's a lot of, lot of people putting parts out there. This is a little bit more difficult to find. So tracking parts down, body parts, anything exterior wise it is a bit of a nightmare. Window rubbers uh, were particularly difficult. Um, they had to come from the States and, and I could only find one company that was doing them, so it's a bit of a challenge. Driving wise, uh, compared to a modern car, um, braking now is great. Uh, it stops really well, just like a modern car. The rest of it is a little bit strange, having the, the large tyres on the rear, because they're only two ply sidewall, you get a lot of sideways movement in the car as you're driving along, so bumps and things make the back of the car wobble around a bit. Uh, which is a bit disconcerting, but you get used to it. It's uh, it's fun. It's it's a fun car to drive. You get a lot of looks. It's got a lot of presence. People normally hear it way before it gets there anyway. Uh, I get a lot of people taking photos as they go past, videos and beeping. So it's it's really fun to drive. Uh, yeah, it sits quite happily at 65 to 70, uh, and it'll pretty much do that all day long. Inside the car, yeah, it's very loud. Uh, I have got music um, in there, but I very rarely put it on because I prefer to hear it anyway. Um, it does get a little bit monotonous if you're on a bit of a long run to a show, so I do tend to break it up with a bit of music, but uh, on the whole, it, it's, it, it's a great sounding car. So. <laughs> One of the, the challenges, I, I wanted to keep the chrome trim running uh, across the bonnet and down the front of the car. Unfortunately, due to the accident uh, coming over, uh, the trim parts are really difficult to get. There's people that will refurb the one I've got, but uh, it's a little bit beyond it. It would need welding, uh, it'd be very expensive. The front piece comes in two pieces down to the crank handle, because um, obviously it doesn't need a crank handle anymore. But that alone was, was coming up at sort of $700 and things when I was looking uh, and then you've got to ship it and hope it turns up in one piece. The top one with the emblem on it, the, the actual Plymouth emblem, uh, I have got, uh, but again, um, it got damaged uh, and it's quite old and neglected, so to, to replace that, uh, they were going for up to $1,000 for a good one. So I, I sat back and had another rethink and because I was blending and going smooth, I decided to go with the smooth painted front, which in the end I'm pleased I did. When I originally got the car over, uh, my first thoughts were to put a blower on it because uh, I'd always wanted to go that far. I spent a while while I was doing the bodywork searching for another bonnet, uh, which was hard enough. So I shipped another bonnet over so I could make a one piece bonnet to, to, ex to accept the hole for the blower because it wouldn't fit underneath. Uh, and then while I was doing the build, uh, I had a bit of a change of thought. One, fuel economy, reliability. Again, I know people that have done the blowers uh, and not that they regret it, but it does become unreliable if you get a blowback, which a lot of these suffer from. If you get a bit of fuel in there, they pop back. It can blow gaskets and then you're taking it apart again. So I decided to change track uh, and just go with a big car, uh, a good manifold and uh, build it differently obviously the build is completely different if you're going blown because of the compression ratios and things so I did a flip um, still got the bonnet um, maybe later on you never know if I keep it long enough I might do another engine and then just swap it over but at the moment I don't know I'm on the fence.